the liver. Yeah. So, the only people, the people who got paid were the were, were the unknown people. Like those are the people who got the screening who got paid, and the session musicians. None of the famous people in the film got paid. But, but the, just the, like the tribal people. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, those are the people that got paid. People who, whose names you wouldn't recognise. Okay. Great. Well, Foundation in the film, if it ever ever went into profit in a million years' time, if it ever went into profit, there's a percentage of the profits that go to all those people. How long did it take to film this movie? Three years. It was like about six months pre production, a year shooting, and two and a half years cutting and, and mixing. How many 26, 26 countries, 45 locations. I have a question. Oh, here's another question. Julia? Oh, was it 26 countries? Yeah. Um, out of those 26 countries, who would you say was the happiest as a group of people, a tribe, or a country? Could you hear this? No, say again. All these 26 countries, uh, what country uh, seemed to be the most uh, happy or elated? Or... India. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. Talking about prejudice, I'm I'm Dutch. Oh. Sure. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> we um we saw a lot of different perspectives throughout the movies from different tribes and people. Yes. What is your biggest insight on all of them doing the movie? Okay, shall I repeat? Hi. Okay. <laughs> if I understand correctly, we saw a, diff a lot of different uh, perspectives of different cultures. What is the uh, common factor? The, the, yeah, the biggest insight for you doing the, the different perspectives. For I think the biggest insight for me is um, how incredibly self-involved I can be without any, without very much pro provocation. <laughs> and uh, and um, when you plan like a lot of people in different cultures, you uh, it becomes very in your face how selfish and up you are. I am. I didn't get that. <laughs> that was his insight that he, his own style, he's so, so selfish. He is. Yeah. Okay. Mm, is there anything else that has a question while he's on the yeah. bus? Oh, Leo, yes. Uh, what made the inspiration start? Why did you start this project? Well, it first began because me and my friend Duncan thought that even though we loved all the different singers and players of the world, particularly the people who still play eight hours a day, there was no real good world. When we were listening to the CDs and albums for those artists, we never really enjoyed it as world music. We thought there's got to be a kind of music that you could make where people would hear how absolutely great Baba Mali is in Senegal, how incredible is Harry Potter, the Indian flute player. There must be a way to showcase how incredible all these things are in a way that all of us in the West would love to hear it. So we started trying to make music that was a bit like Pink Floyd, a bit like hip hop, and with all the best elements of the world music that we loved. And we wanted to go around the world to do fresh recordings with people. That's why we led to having all these kind of philosophical conversations. The philosophy came second, the music came first. For us, hello to Japan. Killer bike. <laughs> <laughs> Killer bike. Okay.